Hello, my name is Roberto Carcash Flores. I will be presenting the Global Actuary, a programmer's perspective. I will, this is my entry for the Young Actuaries World Cup uh, for, as a representative of Portugal. I'm an actuary in the Institutos Actuarios Portugueses, and I also work as a researcher at Vitalis today for tomorrow. A bit of background on me. I am originally from El Salvador, but for the last three or four years, I have been doing some consulting work for US projects related to security. I currently do research mainly related to asset management. And uh, for our firm, most of our assets are located in Mexico. And I also do a bit of actuarial science research uh, here in Portugal. So these are very different things and lo locations, but the common denominator is uh, programming, specifically Python. So this is why the motivation for my talk. So what do I mean by a global actuary? Well, to me, one word comes to mind and is data. And I repeated twice data and more data. We also have the possibility after COVID for remote work. And I also think there is a growing necessity to learn programming languages like R and Python, basically because there is such a huge online community of interdisciplinary resources under the data science umbrella. You have sites like GitHub, Kaggle, Stack Overflow, and they're all free. You also have events like the ICA 2023 next year in Sydney and others from the IIA that permit collaboration with actuaries across borders and time zones. Now, to make this a little bit more dynamic, I wanted to give a small demo of uh, the programming behind the paper that I will be presenting in Sydney. The topic was uh, hedging flood risk uh, using catastrophe bonds. This is a case study for, for New Orleans, and I'm not going to go into detail about the paper itself, but more of how the data was compiled, just to give an idea of, of this intersection. So essentially, we had two main blocks of data. One were losses, and the other was weather. For the weather, you needed two components. First was water from the US Geological Survey. They have this nice dashboard where you can access for sites of river. In my case, I wanted uh, the Mississippi River, which passes through New Orleans. It's this river right here. And uh, there's different variables like age, height, uh, salinity, pH, which could be useful to study the floods, of course. Now, there's a really nice library available called Data Retrieval by these guys here, where you just input the code of the site and you're basically able to access all of the available data from a given date. Uh, the next uh, set of data I wanted was uh, more weather in general, such as precipitation, because there is more rain, uh, more, more likelihood of a flood was uh, the hypothesis. So again, uh, these guys here made a Python library called Meteostat, where you just input the latitude and longitude of the site you want, in my case, New Orleans. And then you're basically able to fetch daily data from my case, 99 to 2022. This is what the data looks like for precipitation, which is the main variable. Once you have the data, it's quite simple to run some analysis, such as the distribution in precipitation. You can see there is quite a heavy tail, and this is what we wanted to model since uh, high precipitation most likely means floods. Now, uh, to, to do this, as I said, there's a real big community of, of, of researchers across disciplines, including actuarial science. So here, uh, I found a nice library by this person, I think his name is George, related to pi ex to extreme events. Um, so the library has different methods like the distributions and also what I wanted to start with, which is a uh, peak silver threshold. It's a way to model uh, these extreme weather events. So it's very easy once you have the library installed and you just take the variable precipitation and then you can get the peak silver threshold analysis. This graph is showing uh, the rainfall total over 48 hours and uh, anything about 80, in this case, I think it's inches, is considered an extreme event. So you can see clusters where there were, uh, for example, hurricane season, where you have uh, these extreme events 
and the idea was to model them using a uh, pixel over threshold. So this is just a very general idea of, of how these things intersect. Now, there are some concerns. A lot of data, you need governance. Uh, it's also important to really get into ethics and to train us more on uh, what is right and what is wrong. For example, I have done some web scraping in other projects and it's delicate what you should scrape, what you shouldn't scrape. Confidentiality, of course, uh, not all work is public and uh, you have to respect that. There is awareness now more than ever of exporting data. So here in the EU, we have quite strict regulation on, on this. And I think something that is overlooked is to credit developers for their work when using these libraries and packages. These are people that take their time to make something public available for everyone. So we really have to give them credit for, for their work. And this is from the first Spider-Man, they made a lot, but the first one, very power comes very responsibility. It's uh, more relevant now than, than ever. So this is just my brief talk. Thank you for your time. This is my email and also my GitHub, which I haven't updated in a while, but it's a way to, to contact me. Thank you very much.